Good morning from Iceland. It is Sunday, August 14th. Uh, it's about 6 a.m. The sun's just come up a few minutes ago. And we're here at the eruption site. You don't want to see me though, you want to see the eruption. So let's look at what's going on here. So I was last here on Thursday and shot uh, several videos on Thursday. And so what's interesting is coming out four days, three days later, and being able to see some of the changes. And if you kind of compare this video to what we saw on Thursday, you'll be able to see, notice some immediate changes. This, this cone here has definitely grown over the last three days. On Thursday, it had a, a far eastern wall built, but this front wall here to the west largely didn't exist. Um, and so this was more of an open face on this side. And the lava that was coming out on Thursday was mainly moving in this direction to the west and to the north. Uh, down here is actually where we sampled some of the lava down at these edges here. And you can see this is now all largely crusted over. I also did some videos further to the north. Um, and so now we can see that most of the flow is heading in this direction, which is to the south. Uh, and there's apparently some concern. Uh, there's a, a low pass over here somewhere, and it appears somewhat imminent that this lava flow could spill over that pass. It's already kind of right near the lip, and then it would start to, it has a clear path from there down towards the ocean. And the concern there from the Icelandic government is that it could potentially um, take out a road, the highway that runs along the south coast as it advances towards the ocean. Um, and so there's talk about what they would actually do, if anything. Um, it depends on the area. Like I know in Hawaii, uh, the native culture there prefers to just let the lava go where it wants to and not uh, get in the way. But when there's infrastructure at risk, whether it's roads or homes, property, that sort of thing, then it becomes definitely some sort of debate. And so we'll see where they what they end up doing. There's there's talk, and this has worked to some degree in the past, is if you build up some barriers, um, you can actually direct the flow. So the idea there would be, um, let's get that lava going the direction we want it to go and not towards the roads or the infrastructure. And so um, there may be there may be something in the news soon about that, that they may end up building some sort of a channel or something that diverts the lava uh, away from any roads or, or critical uh, infrastructure. So, but yeah, the cone is probably maybe 150 feet or so tall. Um, and then we can see most of the lava that's coming out of the vent here is spilling out again to the west and then making a turn to the south. Uh, the leading edge down here it's still probably quite hot. You can see some of the, the steam and gases coming out, but none of it looks molten. I'm gonna walk down this way where it's, it's really kind of smoking and see if we can maybe take one last fresh lava sample. It may not be accessible though, because all the active flows uh, look like they're out there in the middle of this thing, and you obviously can't walk across this right now. Uh, it's still too hot. It's amazing uh, the 2021 flows, which you, you hike past to get in here, uh, are still steaming, are still hot, you know, more than, um, I guess that'd be what, like almost a year after they last cooled. And so rocks are really good insulator and it, this lava takes a while to, to cool completely. And even in the subsurface, it can stay hot for several years. And that's why um, hiking in here on this kind of cool misty morning, there was quite a bit of steam coming out of the old lava flows. It was just, um, you know, still accessing those hot rocks below the surface. Um, this is also quite a contrast from Thursday in the number of people. And so there's a few people back up the hill um, that either hiked out here last night or early this morning. Um, but this is definitely a welcome reprieve to the, the hordes of people that were out here on Thursday. 
So who knows what will happen. It looks like also there was a, a second spatter cone over here that was erupting on Thursday and now it's just mainly uh, outgassing. So I'm not seeing any lava. Well, there's a bright glow near the base, but I'm not seeing any lava coming out the top of that. And so again, this is how these fissure eruptions often evolve over time is this thing was erupting from that spot up on the hillside over there all the way across where you can kind of see that the high points here um, and now a good uh, week and a half into the eruption the the eruptive vent is centralized to one location and it's building up uh, this spatter cone which you know who knows so one question people have is well how long how long will this thing continue to erupt and it's anyone's guess there's there's one uh, hypothesis that that this is a uh, a magma body that's risen towards the surface so it's a shallow magma chamber that's risen up towards the surface and once it erupts its eruptible magma that'll end the eruption and then there's another school of thought uh, that thinks that this magma is still connected to a deeper source down in the mantle and so it could erupt for quite some time um, so it's anyone's guess that's why I hurried over here as quick as I could is you just never know sometimes these eruptions go for a couple days and then they fizzle out and other times they can go for months or even years so um, but that's the story here a beautiful morning I uh, hope these are helping bring the, the eruption to you I know there's much better quality footage on the internet and social media um, but hopefully you get a little different perspective here um, Let's see what else. Uh, so it's mainly, you can see how fluidized it is coming out of the channels there. Um, and what'll be interesting, to, I'm, I'm gonna spend most of the day here and just kind of watch and we should see some changes. I'll try to document any if I can with video, but it's possible that um, the little island between these two channels could break and form one big channel. Um, one could get blocked, although I think that's unlikely given how hot and fluid it is, but it's a dynamic process. The flows might start advancing towards me as other flows cool and get blocked off. So we'll just kind of have to see how this, this goes. But hopefully you've enjoyed these. Uh, feel free to, to donate with the link in the description if you can help out with making these videos. Um, just enjoying sharing this with you. So good morning from Iceland. Good morning. Still Sunday morning. Uh, moved a little bit to the south from where I was, but we can still see the erupting cone there. And here we are at the the edge of the, the flow. Um, and a good place to talk about some of the hazards <laughs> out here if you come to an active eruptive site. So I'm actually downwind of where some of the, it looks like steam on the camera, but that's actually some volcanic gases. And um, they're, they're not pleasant to breathe. I'll probably move upwind here in a minute but there's oh boy hydrogen sulfide sulfur dioxide carbon dioxide I think there's fluorine um, just not good stuff to breathe so you definitely want to be aware of the wind <clears throat> and which direction the winds blowing so you can try to stay upwind especially of the vent there's not much gas coming out of the edge of the flow right there but you wouldn't want to be uh, downwind of the vent which is putting a lot more of the gases uh, out and some of these gases like carbon dioxide is actually quite dense and so it actually stays low to the ground um, which can be hazardous uh, then of course there's the heat itself and I don't know how well it shows up probably not that well but I can actually see the the heat radiating just over here above this lava flow so even though this surface looks solidified um, and it mostly is you just don't know how hot it's going to be and I actually found something down here I don't know the story of this but here is um, half of someone's shoe so the sole of their shoe and I'd love to know the rest of the story here but I have heard of people you know getting too close to the lava or even walking on it um, and burning the soles of their shoes right off and so uh, another reason to kind of be a little bit wary and even if you could walk on this stuff you can see how how spiny and jagged and sharp this is this is the underside of the lava surface and here's a good piece here and you can see just how 
spiny and jagged and sharp that is. Um, also, if you were to walk across this stuff and lose your footing and fall down, you try to catch yourself with your hands and then your hands would be out in front of you. And if you fell down on something like that, that would not be good. Um, so pretty spiny. Uh, so the gases, obviously the heat, um, the, the lava surface itself, those are some of the, the major hazards here. Um, but the nice thing is, is that this is a very tourist friendly eruption. So as long as you um, follow some basic common sense, um, it's not typically too hard to to stay a safe distance away um, and this is a very tourist friendly eruption um, it's a bit of a hike to get out here it took me about an hour and a half and it was some rough walking um, but pretty nice looks like there's some fog coming in over the hill um, and we're still early in the morning Let's see what the weather turns into it was sunny earlier now the sun's kind of blocked out. I don't know if you can see it, but just over this bridge here, I can see some of the active flow uh, moving to the right. And it's only maybe, maybe about 60, 70 yards away from me. There's a little spillover right here. So who knows uh, if we stay here long enough, some of the flow may actually come this way, give us an opportunity to get another sample. Uh, good thing I grabbed the ones I could though on Thursday when the the lava was up against the flow margin and pretty easy to get to but we'll stick around for a few more hours um, enjoy the eruption while we can hope for some good weather yeah it's definitely getting getting foggy over there there we go sunday morning at iceland so quick update it's almost seven o'clock sunday morning local time and uh, while i was down here filming the last little segment down at the edge of the flow and I was down there maybe and I was hanging out there for maybe 20 minutes or so um, something happened up here at the crater so remember previously we had two channels coming out of the crater but this block right here has collapsed blocking the right channel and now all of the lava is being directed from the vent out this left channel and from what I can tell that means that a lot of the lava is directed in my direction so a lot of it's moving this way and i can see some of these flows here in the foreground have progressed a little further this way to the to the west than they were previously so a lot of the lava is still moving to the right which is to the south but now because of that um, blockage of the channel and now it's redirecting it all out of this sort of northwest uh, channel or vent it, a lot of the lava is starting to move this way. So we'll hang out here for a while and I'll update you and see if it gets any closer. But that would be really exciting if uh, the lava got a little bit closer to the edge of the lava field over here. And it was sunny for a while and then the fog rolled in and now it's cloudy again. There's a couple of the search and rescue team from Iceland up on the hill there. Possibly our last update for today, Sunday, August 14th. Uh, it's about a little after eight in the morning, but it's been raining for a while. And looking at the radar, it looks like it's gonna rain for several more hours. So the, the fun factor is decreasing, even though visually uh, things are quite spectacular. Um, I think this lava flow in the foreground has progressed a little further west. Um, but it could take a long, long time for it to reach the, the edge of the, the flow field here. Um, yeah, the cone's just been kind of pumping away, growing for the most part, but occasionally you'll see a little section, um, usually inside the crater walls, collapse. Sometimes that's accompanied by a pretty, pretty big sound. And it's probably hard to tell in the video, but this whole lava lake out here is very slowly moving to the right or to the south for the most part a little bit moving this way but mostly moving uh, to the south um, yeah not as many people here with the rain and the cold it's cold and windy too um, not ideal conditions 
but we'll stick around for a little while longer if something cool happens uh, do another one probably splice all these uh, videos today together just put one comprehensive one out so um, yeah what could be better than that right so there we have it nature on display beautiful volcano in the rain in Iceland pretty awesome hope you're enjoying it